Released in 1990, Little Nemo was made in-house at Capcom. Not that it's hard to tell. At this point in time, Capcom put out some of the best platform games on the NES, like Commando, Ghost and Goblins, Mega Man 1 and 2, Strider, and DuckTales. So, they pretty much had the market cornered, and their name was synonymous with Nintendo's. Before Little Nemo was a game, it was a movie. And before that, it was a comic strip. The author was Windsor McKay, who worked on other comic strips before starting Little Nemo in 1905. Little Nemo ran until 1926 on and off. It was about a child whose name was, well, Nemo. The strip depicted Nemo having very lucid dreams where he would always find himself in slumberland. And no matter what, there is always trouble waiting for him. Right before things would get too far out of hand though, he would wake up, either by falling off his bed or his parents shaking him. Nemo is personally one of my favorite games on the Nintendo. I always put a lot of time into this when I was a kid and I would never get that far. The game was really friggin' hard and kind of relentless. There was always a couple of stages I would get stuck up on, I'd be able to beat it one day, then the next day I just could not finish it at all. Um, but no matter what, I always gave the game everything that I had. Um, now the cover to Little Nemo is actually very, very deceptive, causing parents and children buying it to think that the game would be easy. However, this game is not for the kiddies. But before I say too much about it, let's jump into the review and see what the heck is really going on in Dreamland. The story of the game is as follows. Nemo is sleeping in his bed when he suddenly wakes up to some really bright lights and a weird chick standing in his room. She tells Nemo he's invited to Slumberland. He's been chosen by the princess to be her playmate. Now I know this all sounds very wrong already, but this part is a little weirder. So after enticing Nemo with candy to go with her. Wow, this is great. I love the princess. I love girls. He's not sketched out by the events at all, and he makes the decision to go to Slumberland. Not going right to the castle when he gets to Slumberland though, Nemo decides he wants to go off and adventure. And this is where we run into Flip, Nemo's best friend and also the guy that kinda gets him into trouble a lot of the time. The gameplay for Little Nemo is almost perfect, but the game board is fun and frustrating like a fly to shit. It's not that the game is bad, the controls are actually spot on and it's got a lot of real unique things going for it. You have your typical move around with the D-pad and jump with the A button setup. But this is where the game breaks away from other Capcom titles. Pressing the B button will allow Nemo to throw candy. The candy will stun enemies when it is thrown at them, making it easy to avoid them. When thrown at certain animals though, we find out that the candy is drugged and it actually causes the animals to fall asleep. Once they are asleep, Nemo can ride on some of these animals and sometimes he just wears their skin as a costume to use the ability that the animal has. It's cruel, man. Mastering the ability of each animal is important. They become very crucial in completing the stages. This isn't a bad thing though. It's something that wasn't done in a game yet on this scale. Yeah, we had Mega Man where you could switch between powers, but this was something completely different. Your main objective here is to collect all the keys on any given stage. A lot of them are hidden in hard to reach places, unless you have the animals given to you on that stage. There aren't many health packs laid throughout this game either, but it does have an infinite continue system, so you might want to take advantage of that, or if it's time to just turn the system off, there is no password function, you just have to start the game over. Wandering through the vast locales in search of adventure, Nemo finds himself swimming in the night ocean, flying through the sky, parkouring across rooftops, traversing mushroom forests, and even going through his own home. Stage 3 is all auto-scrolling, and how fun that is, it's always the best part of any game. 
The beginning half of this is very manageable, but as you get further, the challenge rises, and the toys are out for blood. Dive bombing, dropping bombs, all mixed with a dash of platforming. Towards the end, the stage hazards become a device for comboing Nemo to death. The worst part about this is that the toy train contains no checkpoints, so death means going back to the start each time. Like I said though, Little Nemo has infinite continues, so this isn't a problem, it's just remembering the patterns that can be a problem. The pollen can be the most evil thing in the game, and they are everywhere. Moving away from them doesn't do much, they still home in on you. I would say they're on par with enemies such as the Medusas from Castlevania, and, well, anything from Link's Adventure. absolutely hate these damn things. If I had to say, these are single-handedly the reason this game can be classified as NES hard. Okay, I'm allowed to rant one time in a video. Moving on. After adventuring through your dreams, Nemo finally arrives in Slumberland. It's here when we finally meet the Princess Camille. She tells us the true reason that you were summoned to her land, and it wasn't to play and have fun. Princess goes on to tell you her father, King Morpheus, was taken by the King of Nightmare Land, whose name is just Nightmare King, with his ultimate plan of overthrowing Slumberland and vanquishing happy dreams forever. Nemo has zero confidence in himself. The little tyke just doesn't believe he can put a stop to Nightmare King's reign of terror. But hey, remember that staff you've been carrying around the whole game? Well, Nemo has no idea how to use it. It serves only as a reflection of Nemo's willingness to become the hero. But Camille doesn't want to hear any of that doubt. She puts a spell on you, and now you have the knowledge of a thousand Viking warriors or something. The second part of the game is more of a straightforward platformer. It drops the whole key collecting gimmick and favors action. A true challenge for any platform expert. The fire traps, spike ceilings that crush you, and those damn pollen are back. The last few stages even introduce bosses to the assortment in this fever dream. The Penguin King and the Random Flying Stingray can be quite the annoyance as their attack patterns are random, although there are some people out there that do know how to manipulate their movement. With a blank soulless stare, Nightmare King looms as you approach his lair. And that's pretty much where I'm going to end this review. I'm not going to spoil it for you guys. If you really enjoyed it that much, I'm pretty sure you'll go look it up. Or actually, you'll probably just wind up playing the game for yourself and checking it out to see if it really is that hard. Or I'm just that bad at games. Anyway, I'd like to say hello to all my new subscribers. I've got so many new people that have sub subscribed to the channel and have been viewing you know, the videos and enjoying the content commenting and stuff like that and <clears throat> I just want to say thanks to Wood from Beat 'em Ups or I think it's Cat 'em Ups now. I'm not 100% sure on that. I'm pretty sure there was an exchange there though. But yeah, Wood, thanks thanks a lot. Um I'd also like to say thanks to Sean Long from Retro Gaming Tube 85. <clears throat> really cool dude. If you guys haven't checked out his channel, I suggest going to look at it. He does a lot of reviews. He's really into gaming news and stuff like that. So it's it's a very big mix of stuff that you'll find over at his channel as well. Um, anyway guys, uh, thanks a lot for watching, I hope you're enjoying the content, I hope you continue enjoying my content, and as always, I'm Rewind Mike, and thanks for watching.